reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. After this, Jesus went down to Capernaum with his mother and his brothers and his disciples, and there they stayed for a few days. And when Jesus had finished these parables, he went away from there, and coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get his wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brethren James and Joses and Simon and Judas? And are not all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country and in his own house. While he was still speaking to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood outside, asking to speak to him. Someone told him, Your mother and your brethren are standing outside, asking to speak to you. But he replied to the men who told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brethren? And stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brethren. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Let's take two statements from the gospel today and see what follows from them. The first statement is, no prophet is accepted in his own town and in his own family. That's statement number one. Let's think about that for a second. It means the closer we are to people, and this is something particularly tempting within families, the closer we are to people, the less, like, the less likely we are to listen to them. You can kind of see that. There's a sort of saying, familiarity breeds contempt. The better we think we know somebody, the less likely it is that we'll believe that they have something that they can teach us. Okay? I'm not saying it's right, but we can kind of understand why that happens. So that's the first statement. No prophet is accepted in his own town and his own family. The second statement is, whoever does the will of the Father is Jesus' brother and sister and mother. Now let's think about that. That's another kind of deep, interesting statement. It's very beautiful. That when we are close to God, when we're connected to God by doing His will, that means we're Jesus' family. That means He's our brother. That's amazing that Jesus Christ, the Word of God made flesh, is connected to us in that intimate way. Now taken in isolation, just that, that statement by itself is, like I said, beautiful, but let's put the two, two statements together and see what follows. No prophet is accepted in his own family. You are Jesus' family. What follows from that? It follows from that, that the closer we think we are to Jesus, the less likely it is that we are going to listen to him. That's a problem. Jesus is our brother. Mary is our loving mother. And if we were to think about that and meditate on that, which we should because it's amazing, it would help. That part of the truth is beautiful. And I think in a lot of cases, a lot of us are in a spiritual place where that's what we need to think about. Because it's possible, I think it's very, very likely, to get the picture that God is the creator, which he is, he's our judge, which he is, but to miss the part where God actually really loves us. That tenderness of God is something that we can not pay attention to, depending on our situation or even our mood. And so pay attention to it. 
If you feel like you're far from God or God is far from you, if you feel like you're abandoned, it's very much worth thinking about the fact that even if everybody in the world hates you, God loves you. Jesus is your brother. Mother Mary is your mother who cares about you. It really is worth just sitting and just thinking about that but by itself. It's a very kind of important kind of prayer. On the other hand, it's possible to isolate that and forget the other fact. Jesus, who loves you, is the creator of the world made flesh. He is the one who is going to judge all of us at the end of time. In understanding Jesus' tenderness, do not forget who he is. In understanding that Mother Mary is your caring and tender mom, don't forget that she is the Ark of the Covenant. She carried God incarnate with her. And in the Old Testament, if you touch the Ark of the Covenant when you're not supposed to, you die. Now, it doesn't take away from the first statement. It actually makes it even more amazing. It doesn't mean that Mother Mary is far from you or that Jesus is distant from you because he's your judge. It just means that the one who is your brother is the judge of the world, that the one who is your mother is the Ark of the Covenant. That makes the tenderness and the loving part of it, if we, if we can somehow understand both parts of this and bring them together, it makes it all the more amazing. It's like it kind of stretches our hearts to the breaking point to understand both of those things at the same time. Our love and our intimacy is with them. God said in the first reading, God commanded, you shall not make idols. Don't make a fake God. Don't have some false picture of God in your head. Some God that is close to you and that's it. God is close to you, but he's also far at the same time. He's the creator, but he's your brother at the same time. And if we have trouble understanding that, that's fine. Nobody said you have to understand God. In fact, the second you think you do, you have failed. You are worshiping an idol if you think you understand who God is. Now let me make a kind of practical application here too. Love and intimacy have to be built on respect. Otherwise, they fall apart. Let's go back to that first statement. No prophet is accepted in his own town, in his own family. Why? Well, look at what they were saying. Oh, isn't, this, isn't his mother called Mary? Isn't his dad the carpenter? They were all with us all this time. Where did he learn all this? And they were offended by him. Why? Because they didn't know who he was. But why didn't they know who he was? Because they assumed they already did. Please never forget to do that in your family. Because in your family, it's so easy to forget. Yes, your mom and dad care about you and they'll play with you and they'll tickle you and they'll hug you and they'll do all these beautiful things. Do not forget that they are the ones that gave you life. Love them, be like open-hearted with them, be comfortable with them. But that has to have the foundation of respect. That's why the fourth commandment is what it is. Parents, don't think I'm going to be one-sided on this. Nice try. Yes, you gave them life. And you feed them and their entire existence is dependent on you up until some point. Do not dare Forget that this is the image of God that you are carrying with you. Not your property. 
And if that is forgotten, then whatever you think love is between you and them is not really love. If love is only comfort and intimacy and closeness and not respect, you're playing a game. That's some kind of idolatry or some kind of silliness is happening. That's not really love. And that's the only way to escape the conclusion of that little argument that I built at the beginning. It is possible to be Christ's family. It is possible to be Mary's child. And at the same time, to have that relationship in trembling and awe. And you know what we call that? When you put both of those things together, that's what prayer is. Prayer is embracing both parts of that. Because if it's just one, if God is just our judge, if Mary is just the Ark of the Covenant, and that's all, run away for your life. You can't have a relationship with just a creator who cares nothing about you. But if it's only God loves me, and I'm a special little baby, and I can get away with anything I want, nope, that's not God that you have a relationship with. God is the Lord, and he will not be related to in any other way. And Mary is our mother, but she is also our queen. And her body right now is in heaven. And yes, we're going to crown her today after the procession which means we get to touch her. But we get to touch her because we are putting a crown on her head. That's the foundation for our relationships of prayer, but it's also the foundation of our relationships within our family. And it is the essence of the Christian mystery to embrace two things that are hard for us to put together. And the reason why it's important to do that is because God is always going to be larger than us. And so as we expand our minds and our hearts to embrace the fullness of the Christian mystery, remember that there are images of God that the Christian mystery lives within our house, in our parents, in our brothers and sisters, and in our children.